Hello and welcome back to Come Geeksome. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe for all future content. Chuck Hubbard's affidavit is, oh my god, it is so spicy. It is, mwah, you know, it is brilliant what he's done and what he said here. So I'm going to jump straight back into it. So we did do a couple of yes, not that many. Because a few have taken my eye today and, well, last night I was reading it. And a lot of these, ooh. Chris Sabat is not exactly painted in a good light. So, we're going to jump straight in, and we're going to say, carry on with Chuck's uh, affidavit. So it goes here. Funimation did not provide any employee handbook to me, Vic, Jamie Markey, and Monica Riel. So, you know, they're all like, oh no, there's nothing there, this hasn't happened. But obviously we've seen the actual insert of what they call their handbook. And, you know, we can just carry on. In the 20 years I've worked at Funimation, it was very common for employees, voice actors, writers, producers, directors to hug and kiss each other at the Funimation studios. Again, all this was stopped when Sony, they implemented a no-hugs policy back in 2017, which is very interesting, you know, and it does carry on, you know, this is one of the best ones by here. Number 41. When the Dragon Ball Kai was being recorded in 2007, I heard rumours that actresses had been recast at Funimation for refusing advances by Funimation employees. I consider these rumours credible based on my experience working at Funimation and from direct messages received from a former Dragon Ball Z cast member. So, with that right by there, it does go to show that they do have some kind of casting couch. And it's mostly by the seams that it does to be with Chris Sabat and his studio. Because the next point, I also heard that actors who participated in these with Funimation Okatron 5000 employees were cast in the roles. I consider these rumours credible based on my experience working at Funimation. And with these, you know, obviously, you know, he's saying they're rumours, but again, this other side, you know, the ones who are all against uh, people, they said... You know, when we saw these are just rumours, there's no evidence, they're like, no, they're true. So going by their logic and the way they think, all this is true. So, you know, that's why they don't like it, and that's why they have been so vocal in the last 48 to 72 hours, because a lot of stuff has come out. And it, it does seem funny that this is what they're doing, but, you know, 100%, they've come out and they're like, oh, no, they, these are wrong, these are wrong, it's hearsay, it's rumours. It's so like, well, when we said all of that, you were like, no, it's not, it's true. So, using their logic, all this is true. And to be honest with you, he's even, you know, Chuck has even gone as far in saying that I believe these because I've received messages from former Dragon Ball Z cast members. You know, so these people have gone through it and they've like, yeah, this has happened to me. It's exactly how they've done it with against him. And it's kind of funny because when you see all... All of these things going across, man. It's just like, holy hell, you know? Anyway, I'm going to carry on. You know, we are going to go down a little bit uh, further. You know, obviously, Chris Sabat is the owner of Okatron 5000, the studio that uh, Funimation seemed to lease out a lot of this stuff to. You know, he's engaged in a lot of stuff with Funimation and Toei Animation and everything else. And when you go hit, you know, Chris Sabat has got this kind of influence there, then you know that a lot of them are not going to go against him, including uh, Janko, the guy who used to own Funimation. So we're going to carry on, and we're going to skip on down straight away to number 72. During my settlement efforts, Todd Habercorn told me that Chris Sabat, Ron Toy, and Sean Schemmel told him that he was in danger of never working at Funimation again because he retained the same law firm as Vic. So, Chris Abat, Sean Schemmel, okay, voice actors in the business, this, that, and the other. But Ron Toy? So why is he there? Why is he saying it as well, like, you know? That's a little bit fishy there, because Ron Toy supposedly has nothing to do with Funimation. But obviously, the way uh, he's talking this, you know, Ron is like, well, first of all, he, Ron shouldn't say nothing because it's got nothing to do with him. You know, he doesn't work in Funimation, or so he says, you know. And 
it's kind of sad to see that, you know, Chuck is also feared for his career, and he's also, as well, him and his wife, they fear direct, planned, and specific retaliation from Chris Sabat and those loyal to him in response to this affidavit that will be damaging to my reputation and career. You know, Chuck has gone out of his way for all of this. You know, he doesn't want anything to happen. He's doing all of this on his own, you know. And it's sad to see because Chuck is, the, Chuck is just sticking up for his friend. And his so-called other friends are threatening him. That's bad, you know, that's really disgusting. You know, and it gets even better by here. Funimation employees, including Marky, Rial, and Michelle Spech, I think as you say your name, if not, I don't care, have advised me more than once since February 2019 that criminal charges were coming against him. In response, I encouraged them to help these alleged victims. And, you know, told them to let them come forward. When asked to provide specifics to these allegations, they couldn't or refused to do so. Where have we seen this, ladies and gentlemen? We've seen this on Twitter. You know, where they've either said, no, you don't deserve it, then block you, or they just block you straight up. When you see that sort of thing and you know that it's like, ah, right, okay, they're not even going to do it to people they class as one of their closest friends sort of thing. And it does go to show that these people... They're not exactly nice people, you know? So, yeah, just going along, you know, there's tons in this one. You know, it's, you know, again, you know, it's just a lot of stuff, and Chuck has gone out of his way to do all of this. Which, again, Vic and Chuck, you know, they must be so much, you know, they must have good friends and everything else, because, again, this is just unbelievable. We're going to end this video by here, so if you are new to the channel, please smack that subscribe button, hit that like uh, little thumbs up, and I'll see all you lovely people soon.